In today's video, I'm gonna go over five features in Lychee Slicer you may not know about. And number five is my favorite, so stay tuned for that one. This first one is a little bit two for one, but we're calling it one because uh, it's important. I gotta show you something. And this is planar cut. Now, the reason why it's two for one is in order to show you some of the limitations of it, I have to show you another feature within Lychee Slicer. So real quick, let's show you where it is. You'll find it under layout, tools, and planar cut. Now, when you have planar cut, what you really wanna pay attention to is this white line that kind of saturates the area. First thing, I guess, make sure that you have the item selected that you want. In this one, I had the box selected, but if I wanted to have this uh, cylinder selected, I have to make sure it's selected first, and then the cylinder be the one that shows up. So just make sure of that one. And as you can see here, I've got this white ring around it, and that's all I really care about. From here, I could hit select cutouts, but since there's only one, it doesn't really matter. I can turn it on or off, but there's only one cutout. I'm gonna hit apply. What that's gonna do is it's going to split that in half where that cut was at, and now I have two unique objects found in the objects library. I've got the cylinder uh, one and, well, zero one and one one. Now, one of the limitations of this tool is if you've got objects that are multiple meshes smashed together. Sometimes from 3D files you buy online, this can happen, or you can even do it yourself within Lightsheet Slicer. Let me show you how that works. So let's take this cube right here, and I'm gonna mash it into this box. I'm gonna select both of these objects, and then I'm gonna go over to Tools, and I'm gonna Merge. What this is gonna do is it's gonna combine these into a single object. Now, they may look like one object, but I need to show you something. They're really just two objects that are grouped together. And if, you, if I use this view right here, you can maybe see the lines right here. They're kind of hard to see. A better way to do it would be to use 3D hollowing. So I'm gonna come over here, 3D hollow it, and when you hit this one, you can kind of see, let's make it really, really thin. You can kind of see that these objects are still, they're both still present. And that's because it's not, it didn't bool them, it, or booling, however you say it, I don't know. It just clumped them together. So now that we have that in mind, let's go through and delete the 3D hollowing. Go back over to layout, and I'm going to make sure that this one's selected. I'm gonna go back over to the planar cut. And now, if the planar cut is intersecting both of them right here, I hit apply, it's not gonna work. Uh, it's, it can't, it, we can't cut multiple objects because we'd have to remesh everything. That's a really complicated program, something that uh, professional 3D programs can do, but Light Cheese Slicer is a slicer, uh, not the same type of product. Uh, and just to show you one more time, something that's kind of interesting. If I go back over to the planar cut, and let's say I only have the box intersected, and I hit apply, it's actually going to cut the box and it's going to eject the, uh, the other object right out of there. So just something to keep in mind with planar cut. So now for my second thing, support selection. Now for that, I've created this kind of complex looking scene. So let me explain it real quick and then we'll get into it. So the way it works right now is the one in the center here is actually my, my light, my, my normal preset. And it's like that on all of them. Now on the first three, the only thing I changed is the support tip size. Going from the left of the center, it goes down by 0.1. On this side, it goes up to 0.3. On these ones, the, the support tip doesn't change at all. Now what's actually changing between getting smaller or getting bigger is the support shaft. And I'm doing this to show you something. And over here, these are just my light, medium, and heavy. Um, unchanged, they're just, they are as like a control. So I'm gonna go over to supports. I'm gonna go to selection. The first one is select, like select your light, medium, or heavy. Now these are only gonna select the ones that are exactly like your presets, light, medium, heavy. And I can see this one, if I click on heavy, you see it selected the three heavy, the one, two, and the three. It's gonna do the same thing for the medium and the same thing for the light. It's only gonna select the exact ones. Now where things get really interesting is when I choose the support select, select close. So let's say select close to medium. Now here you see it's selected some interesting ones. It selected all of these under medium, these three under light, and only some of the ones under medium, and of course the, the actual medium over here. Now what's going on here is that when you use select like what you're, or close to, what you're really doing is not based on the support tip size, it's actually based on the support shaft size. So what we can see here is that it didn't want these last three over here. So what's different about these last three? Well, if I click on this one, I can see this is 0.106, and this one is 0 0.110, 0 0.108, 0 0.106. So remember, these are getting smaller over here. So this is smaller, getting bigger, getting bigger, and then it grabbed 0.106. So what it's doing is it doesn't like anything smaller or too far away from the original being 1.1 down past um, 1.06. So there, there's only a threshold in which it can get farther and farther away before the like will work. 
And just to show you again, here's on the light. You can see it grabbed all the lights over here, but on these ones, it only grabbed light supports that were within a range of how big or how small the support shaft could get from the original. So just keep that in mind as you use this tool. It's only gonna do it based on the support shaft size, not the support tip size. And for the third one, it's the measuring tool. Now there's a secret in this I don't think you know about, but first let's just show you where it is. It's found under the layout tab and under measure right here. Now right here, I've got four little designs that I altered for a different printer. It's just to hold a vat. And on these ones, it's I show you just kind of how the tool works real quick and we can just measure this. So let, I'm just gonna click right here, uh, hit F on my keyboard to center it and then uh, kind of go over the other side click again and I can see that this right here is 40.9 or pretty close to 41 millimeters. And if I come over to the short one right here, let's measure that guy. I'm gonna aim it towards the top so I can be a little bit more accurate, kind of the top center, 35. So, you know, as you can see, it's a little bit longer. But here's where this tool really, really shines. Let's say right here, well, that's not let's say, this is actually true. This model right here, it doesn't matter its size. There's a lot of free space around it, but there is a measurement that matters a lot. And that is these opening, these holes right here. And that's because these go over a metal peg. And if it's too tight, I'm gonna have to like sand them or do something, it's gonna be a big pain. So I prefer that not to happen. So what I can come in here is I can go through and I can measure the size of this opening. I'm gonna measure it real quick. And so I'm seeing 6.8 millimeters. Now let's say I went through and I took my digital calipers and I measured that metal peg on the printer and it was measuring seven millimeters. Not only did I want it to be um, seven, but I want it to be a little bit bigger for like a little play in case there's some blooming or something. What I can come in here, let's say I'm gonna set this to then 7.2, give myself a little free space. I hit enter and that's gonna scale this part up by that much. Now this hole is 7.2 millimeters. The rest of the model scaled up as well, but like I said earlier, that didn't really matter. So there's one quick, really cool way you can use the measuring tool along with some scaling to make sure your objects are the correct size where it matters the most. Now for the fourth one, this is Export Mesh. And to show you this one, I grabbed a part of this Kraken that I used to crunch a bunch of models in a 3D hollowing video that I did earlier. Go check that one out. And what's interesting about this one or why I chose it is that this one's been 3D hollowed. So if I come over to Prepare and click on the Interior Exterior button, you can see it's been 3D hollowed. It's got hollowing holes and all the hollowing holes are black. Now the only reason why the hollowing holes matter if they're black or white is it only means whether you can export it as mesh or not. And since I'm here to export as mesh, that, that matters. For that one, I go over to Export. And over here, I'm going to export the scene and I'm gonna choose the .stl over here to export the 3D file. So it's gonna create holes and export 3D files. I want that checked. Now when I click on this one, I'm gonna save it to my desktop and then we'll save that and I'll re-import it back in and kind of show you what that does. Now here we can see that body. This is the one that I just exported. I load it back in, but now this is a .stl right here. I just called it hollow. Um, now you'll also notice under prepare, the extra view doesn't work anymore. These supports can't be edited, they're, they're fully baked in. If I use the slider, we can still see it's been hollowed. All that stuff is there, but it's all baked in geometry. Now you can do this to a single object or you can do it to a single to an entire scene. So you can like get a scene set up, get it all going and export it as a .stl with all of the pre-work you've done in Lightyear Slicer ready to go. The other part where this could be handy, let's say you wanna do multi-cure calibration and you're dealing with an AnyCubic printer. So here what I've done, I've created a scene where I've created the boxes of calibration and I put one, two, three, four, five, six in each of the zones. Now if I go through and I export this as its own file, this will be a single .stl file with all six objects in it and you can load it up as in the RERF format and then print it through an AnyCubic printer and have all your objects pre-labeled and ready to go. Now for the fifth and final one, this one is one of my favorites. So whether you got your files from the Lychee library, like this Thickest Beast from Titan Forge, found on the Lychee library. We just got Titan Forge on the library, so go check them out. Or you're subscribed to one of the many patrons that use Lychee library. This is a feature you're gonna wanna use if your print came out looking something like this, where you only have the supports and there is no model. You could also use this if you go to take off supports and they're just really hard to take off, but for this scenario, let's just pretend that all I got was the supports. And so for this particular one, I'm gonna pick on one of my favorite 3D artists that's not in the Lychee library. And I'm picking on them because they probably have the best pre-supports in the business. And so I feel, you know, maybe they need to be taken down a notch with how big their ego has gotten on that one. Not really, they're, they're fantastic. And this is a model by Bulkomancer and this is V. I haven't actually printed it yet, but I've printed the other ones and I will print this one in the future. It's, they're, they're some of my favorite. 
So for this situation, I have the torso and the build plate. Now this build plate is really cool. It's actually, it comes together so you can put Vi and Jinx in a single uh, diorama. It's really awesome. Again, I haven't printed it yet, but anyway, back, I'll, I'll try to stay on topic. So now that I've got all the support selected, I'm gonna go over to tip and I'm gonna go over to this plus minus button. And this is the relative calculator. Under here, there's three options. There's minus, so this would be if the supports were all there and I tried to take them off and they were just really, really tough. Plus, which is just going to add supports um, you know, by the millimeter, or my favorite, the percent. And this is gonna do it based on percent. So from here, I just click on add plus 10, which is 110%, and hit apply. Now we can see is the tip diameter went from 40 to 0.44, which is gonna add just a little bit, and maybe that's enough to make it all work. But anyway, this is the relative calculator, kind of a hidden feature within Lightshade Slicer that can be really, really powerful to get some stubborn prints just to work. And there you go, after adjusting the relative calculator, everything printed just fine, at least in the Lightshade Slicer simulator. And I think that about covers it for this video. I hope you learned something new, and as always, if you could, please like and subscribe, follow us on our Lightshade Slicer Discord, or our Facebook group, or anything else Lightshade Slicer. And as always, Thank you for watching and have a good day.